Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Analyzing Phase Noise with FSK40. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make phase noise measurements on Rodian Schwartz Spectrum Analyzers using the K40 Phase Noise Analysis option. In addition to assuming a basic operational knowledge of Rodian Schwartz Spectrum Analyzers, this presentation also assumes a basic technical understanding of phase noise. If you're unfamiliar with phase noise or how it's measured, you may want to watch the presentation Understanding Phase Noise Fundamentals before continuing with this presentation. And if you're interested in learning more about the Spectrum Analyzer or Direct Spectrum Method of Measuring Phase Noise, you might also be interested in the presentation Measuring Phase Noise, the Spectrum Analyzer Method. The K40 Phase Noise Measurement option enables simple, automated measurements of phase noise and is available on the FSW, FSV3000, FPS, and FPL1000 series of spectrum analyzers from Rodi and Schwartz. In this presentation, we'll be using an FSW, but the graphical user interface and functionality is essentially identical across all of these instrument families. The K40 option provides both graphical and numerical results and allows the user to configure a wide variety of measurement and analysis parameters. And as you'll see, in addition to basic phase noise measurements, the K40 option also provides a variety of more advanced features and functionality. To start the phase noise application on the FSW, simply press the mode key and then select phase noise from the list of available modes. If the center frequency and reference level are already correctly configured, the phase noise measurement application will automatically run and display results in graphical form. By default, phase noise is measured over the offset range of 1 kHz to 1 MHz, and results are given both as raw and as smooth traces of the signal sideband phase noise. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to change these default values and behavior, as well as how to use additional features and functionality to make and interpret phase noise measurements. The configuration overview is a convenient way to configure measurement setup, analysis parameters, and different ways of displaying results. Many of these functions can also be accessed through various soft keys in different menus. The most important configuration parameters are the nominal signal frequency and level, and these are both found in the input front end block, so let's start there. The nominal frequency and level of the signal are configured under measurement settings. In the case of very high input signal levels, either manual or automatic attenuation can be enabled. And in the case of very low input signal levels, an optional internal or external preamplifier can be enabled. The nominal values for frequency and level should match the input signal as closely as possible. But as we'll see shortly, the K40 option is also able to compensate in real time for slight variations in both frequency and level. After setting frequency and level, the next most important parameter in the phase noise measurement is the offset range over which we measure the phase noise. This is defined using start and stop offsets, and these determine the lower and upper bounds of our phase noise results plot. We can also specify the resolution bandwidth used when making the measurement. As you might expect, a lower resolution bandwidth generally provides better results, but also increases measurement time. Similarly, we can specify a number of averages over which to make the measurement. Averaging reduces variations in results, but will also increase measurement time. And finally, a set of presets are available for common measurement tasks. The most fundamental phase noise measurement result is a semi-log plot of single sideband phase noise giving phase noise power, in dBc per hertz, as a function of the offset. If necessary, the results can be manually or automatically scaled. Note that as mentioned earlier, by default there are two traces, a raw trace in blue and a smooth trace in yellow. Let's take a moment to talk about smoothing. As the name implies, smoothing can be used to clean up or smooth a trace. Phase noise measurement results usually do not contain large jumps so smoothing is acceptable in most cases. Note that this smoothing is performed after the data is acquired. Smoothing only affects how the data is displayed, not the actual results themselves. Smoothing can be configured as linear, logarithmic, or median, and the percentage of smoothing can be specified by the user. Larger percentage values increase the amount of smoothing. Again, remember that smoothing only changes how we display the data, not the measured data points themselves. What if we're interested in the phase noise at a specific frequency offset? As you should already know, 
This is called spot noise and is often used when verifying that phase noise is below a certain specified level at a given frequency offset. Spot noise is often displayed as a table of offsets and phase noise values, with markers automatically placed at the corresponding points in the trace. By default, spot noise values are usually measured at so-called decade edges, that is, at different powers of 10, for example, 1 kHz, 10 kHz, 100 kHz, etc., although these can be easily changed by the user. In addition to these basic functions, the K40 phase noise measurement option also includes many advanced features, such as verification and tracking, IQ mode, AM rejection, spur removal, limit lines, and integrated or residual phase noise measurements. Let's take a few minutes to look at each one of these, starting with verification and tracking. In order to accurately measure the phase noise of a device under test, the analyzer requires precise knowledge of both the frequency and the level of the signal. The K40 phase noise analysis option can automatically verify that the signal's frequency and level are within user-defined limits or tolerances. If necessary, it can also track these values, that is, automatically adjust settings to compensate for small variations in frequency and level. This is particularly useful when testing devices that tend to drift in frequency and level, such as voltage-controlled oscillators. And if verification or tracking fail, a user-defined action can be taken, such as running an auto-leveling routine, restarting, or stopping the measurement. By default, the K40 phase noise measurement option uses the traditional swept analysis mode, but phase noise can also be measured using the so-called IQ mode. In this mode, wideband spectrum is acquired and then digitized as IQ data, that is, samples containing both magnitude and phase information. This IQ data is processed using the fast Fourier transform, corrected for frequency drift, and is then used to calculate the phase noise results. Although swept mode is a default mode in K40, IQ mode has several important advantages. To begin with, measuring phase noise with IQ data is usually several times faster than the traditional swept mode. IQ mode also provides better tracking and higher stability, especially for measurements close to the carrier. Let's take a look at an example. Here we're trying to measure the phase noise of a slightly unstable voltage-controlled oscillator. In swept mode, we get inaccurate results at close-in offsets due to the oscillator drift. Measuring in IQ mode gives a more accurate result, since this drift can be corrected before the phase noise is calculated. Another useful feature enabled by IQ mode is AM rejection. AM rejection can remove much of the AM noise from our phase noise measurement results, and this too increases our measurement accuracy. For example, this trace shows our results without AM rejection enabled, and this trace shows the results after AM rejection has been enabled. Note that unlike the drifting VCO example we saw a moment ago, the effects of AM noise are usually greatest at higher offsets, that is, further away from the carrier. Let's move on and talk about spurs. Measured and plotted phase noise data may contain spurious signals, or spurs. These are not actual peaks in the oscillator's phase noise, but rather are usually caused by some type of interfering or other spurious signal. In some cases, we may want a list of these spurious signals, that is, their frequencies and their powers. In other cases, we sometimes want to remove these spurs from our phase noise measurement curve and fill in the gaps with an interpolated or median value calculated from nearby trace points. In both cases, we define a spur as a signal that's n dB or more above the median trace. For example, if we set n equal to 10 dB, then our threshold values would be 10 dB above the calculated median trace. In this example, the signal on the left would be considered a spur because its level is more than 10 dB higher than the median trace. The signal on the right would not be considered a spur because its power is below this threshold trace. In addition to providing a list of spurs, the K40 option also provides a spur removal function with a user-definable threshold offset in dB. By defining a spur threshold and enabling spur removal, we can see that the spurs that are over our defined threshold have been removed from the trace. Similar to what we saw with smoothing, spur removal only changes how the trace is displayed. It doesn't change the measured data. Limit lines are an easy way to check if measurement results are within defined limits. That is, they provide a simple pass-fail type result. Typically, 
Phase noise curves have different slopes within different offset regions or ranges. For example, there may be a relatively flat close-in region, a region where the curve takes on a steeper slope, and then a region where the noise floor dominates and the curve becomes flat once more. Therefore, we typically define phase noise limit lines by specifying the boundaries between these regions, the so-called corner frequencies, and the slopes within each region. The K40 phase noise analysis option supports up to five ranges, each with a different slope. Note too that it's also possible to create an arbitrary limit line as a simple series of points. Let's look at an example of how to create a phase noise limit line using corner frequencies and ranges. We'll start by choosing to create a limit line of type noise floor and two ranges. We define the noise floor, which has a zero slope, as minus 115 dBm per hertz. This segment of the limit line ends at 30 kHz. The limit line then rises at 20 dB per decade until it reaches 5 kHz, at which point it again has a zero slope. If any part of the trace violates the limit line, a failure is reported. Throughout this presentation, we've been looking at phase noise in units of dBc per hertz at a given offset, plotted as a curve. Another way of quantifying phase noise is by integrating the phase noise between a pair of offsets. These are called integrated or residual measurements and can be automatically calculated and displayed by the K40 option. The results of this integration are residual phase modulation in degrees, residual frequency modulation in hertz, and jitter in units of seconds. If you're looking for phase noise in degrees or want to convert measured phase noise to jitter, these can be easily calculated using the K40 residual measurement functions. Let's end with a brief summary of what we've covered. The K40 phase noise measurement option is supported on most Rodian Schwartz spectrum analyzers and enables user configurable automated phase noise measurements. It provides the standard single sideband graphical phase noise results, as well as a number of different types of numerical results. The frequency and level verification slash tracking function is very helpful when measuring drifting or unstable sources. Some of the more advanced features of the K40 option are based on the use of IQ data for making phase noise measurements. In addition to higher speed and better accuracy, IQ mode enables the removal of AM noise from the measurement results. In addition, tools such as spur removal and limit lines aid in the analysis of the measurement results. And finally, the K40 option automatically calculates and displays a number of integrated or residual measurements of phase noise. This concludes our presentation analyzing phase noise with FSK40. If you'd like to learn more about phase noise, phase noise measurement techniques, or instruments for measuring phase noise, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.